turn it off. Mm -hmm. Find it. There you go. Okay. All the way down. There you go. Hallelujah. We should be already broadcasting on one. Yes, panel. we are. Both of them. Okay. Good deal. Mm -hmm. 21 seconds in. Huh? We're 21 You're seconds in. You're up. Live. Oh, we're live? Yes, okay. ma'am. Praise God. We just want to... We just want to welcome everybody on Facebook and overseas to the ministry of Jesus Christ through Trinity Kingdom Connection. We just want to thank God for this beautiful yes, day yes. that he put Hallelujah. breath in our bodies so that we can get up and Amen. move around and tell people about the precious Lord and, and what he has done for us. Uh, we, we just absolutely want to welcome you into uh, watching us today and want you all to know that we pray for every person uh, that's on Facebook. We don't know you by name, but when we pray, we pray, Father, in the name of Yeshua Jesus, uh, uh, those that are overseas watching, um, we, we just thank you for that. We... Um, we have our prayer basket here with names in it, and we've got our, our cross. You know what? The cross, the cross of Jesus is, is, is the names that are on this cross, and that, that's what the cross was all about. He took every kind of sin, disease, sickness, uh, ailment, whatever it is that you're dealing with, Jesus has already suffered that on the cross, and that's what this is all about. And we thank God for the love that... He has shown us for the suffering that he went through when he took the beating on his body for our healing. Yes. Oh, man. And and then the nailing of his hands and the, the crown of thorns that they beat into his skull. He, all the sin, he became sin in such a way that his daddy would not even look at him. So he had to turn his face away from him. That's one of the reasons why Jesus said, My God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Come on. And, I, you know, God gave me that revelation, and it just brought tears to my eyes. And I said, You know, if God would not look on his own son that had, assumed, that had taken the sins of the world onto his body, had to turn his face away from his own son, do you think that for one minute he's going to look on you whenever you're committing sin? And you can say I'm under the grace of God if you want to, but I promise you grace won't keep you out of hell if you're doing something and you drop dead while you're doing it and it goes against God's word. You will not make it. You will not make it. We just want to... Man, I tell you, this is about... We get very plain spoken here when it comes Come when it comes talking about our Savior Jesus and what He went through, uh, Yeshua and what He went through. Yes, Lord. Uh, we're very plain spoken about it. And I'm going to ask for Rock if he'll come up and open with prayer. We've got a special request from Israel that we're going to pray about. Mm -hmm. uh, but just want to welcome everybody. Want to say oh, hello goodness. to Isaac and his family over there and my baby. My baby girl named Dolores wants to know we yes. love you. I love that. Isn't I think precious. Too. Oh, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That, that he named his daughter Dolores uh, after me, and it's just amazing. It brings it brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. But welcome, oh, welcome to Trinity Kingdom Connection of Lake Park. Welcome to the ministry of Jesus Christ through Trinity Kingdom Connection yes, of Lake Park. And I'm gonna turn this over to. Uh, Hallelujah, Father. We want to thank you. I want to thank you right now, Father God, for what you're doing in the earth. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, you're revealing yes. so many things right now in this hour, in this time, Lord God. And we're getting ready for some of the most amazing times yes, in all of history. Hallelujah. We're in that period of time just before your return. But Father God, we see you starting to reveal a lot of lies that have been told. Yes. We see you revealing a lot of hidden things yes. that the devil has been trying to do to the people of Amen. God, the yes. people in general, Lord yes. God, because he hates all living yes. beings. Let me just say something to Amen. you right now. Before Amen. we pray about the Ethiopian people over in Israel, hallelujah, God bless them. The end result is the devil hates you for being a human being. Amen. He hates all human beings. Why? Because he's afraid that one day you will get your mind right 
with God, yes. get your soul right Hallelujah. with the Lord, Hallelujah. get your sins under the blood of Jesus yes, Christ, Lord. and know what will happen yes. to you, hallelujah, as you become a ruler and not a slave to sin. Praise God. And when hallelujah. you become a ruler and not yes, a slave Lord. to sin, you also Thank become you. a ruler over the devil, death, yes. hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ guaranteed that to you yes, because he's a guaranteer yes. of a new covenant. Hallelujah. Yes, the book of Hebrews tells us that. Yes. In fact, Pastor just talked to us about the cross and what he did for us with sickness, sin, death, hell, and the grave. Amen. He made us victorious over it. Amen. But let me tell you something, folks, that God has built into this physical universe everything that you'll need Amen. to be an overcomer. Amen. Everything. Amen. 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 A lot of, oh, if I could just pull yes. it out of, the, out of the spiritual, if I could just pull it out of the spiritual, let me just tell you something. Everything that you need is already here. Yes. Jesus Christ has already supplied it for you. Yes. He yes. said, by my stripes, I've healed you. Yes, yes Lord. I by that. what I've yes. suffered I for you, you. by the wounds, the stripes, yes. the piercings, yes. the beatings. Yes. So I, hallelujah. Father God, we just want to thank you so much for what Jesus went through for us. Yes. And the yes. end result yes. is he gave us yes. power yes. to overcome yes. the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, yes. you can choose to be an overcomer if you'll walk in his word. I see it. You'll overcome. Yes. I'm talking to the Ethiopians over there in Ethiopia and hallelujah yes. over in Israel right now. Yes. Father God, you've made them an overcomer. Now they're being discriminated against yes. maybe by some of the Orthodox rabbis that don't like maybe their skin color, don't like maybe the way they do things, don't like the fact that they believe in Jesus Christ. But I'm telling you this, you people over there, you Ethiopian Jews, I'm telling you this. Right now, from the voice of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, as you continue in Christ Jesus, hallelujah, you are overcomers over the situation that's going on there in Israel, hallelujah. You'll be overcomers over Rabbi Kana. You'll be overcomers over the Orthodox sect that's trying to rule that country for their own political and spiritual rulership here in the earth. But I'm going to tell you, it's not the spiritual rulership of God, hallelujah. It's not the spiritual rulership of Jesus Christ that they're trying to put before. Right. I'm going to tell you, as you stick closer yes. and closer to Jesus Christ, you'll be overcomers right in the midst of them. Yes. Right in the midst of them. They'll have to see what God has done for you, and they'll have to come down and bow Thanks. and admit that Jesus Christ loves you. Hallelujah. 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 They'll have to admit that he's Amen. greater than they are. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That he is the Holy One, blessed be he. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. If that time is coming for Israel, there's so many that I'm seeing now, college-age students yes. and younger folks over in Israel right now that are claiming the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, as they say in Israeli. They're sitting there claiming him as Lord and King, as their Messiah and yes. ruler over them. Hallelujah. They're claiming him as yes, the Lord. Son of God. God! Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, you Orthodox folks, you're sitting there, you're turning in your grave. Hallelujah. I say, even while you're alive, you're dead. Yes. I'm going to tell you, until you see the light of Jesus Christ, you'll not be truly alive, even though you're walking around in this dirt suit. I'm going to, but I'm going to tell you, this is the mercy and the love of Jesus Christ. He causes it to rain on the just and the unjust. Yes. He causes the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. I'm going to tell you that, let me tell you, for many of you Orthodox that are suffering diseases today, mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ has the healing for you. Yes, he's already suffered it. Hallelujah. He suffered it in the supernatural, yes. Yes, but he's he also did. made it available to you in the natural. Yes, he has. Hallelujah. And we're going to begin to reveal some of those secrets to you. Some of those things that are right in front of us that we can go ahead and grab hold of the things that God has given us when he created this creation for the healings not only of our bodies but our minds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when he called, called for the healing of our souls, we're going to have to turn our face fully towards the cross. That's it. When it talks about the healing of our spirits, we're going to have to turn our face fully towards the cross. Hallelujah. Because that's his realm, not our realm. He gave us this realm, the physical realm, but the spiritual realm is all his. Hallelujah. Yes, is. And we want to praise him and thank yes, him because everything yes. that was done in the spirit, mm. hallelujah, was done yes. for our good. Thank everything you. that he came and he did here. Thank now remember, faith without works is dead. dead. Faith without works is dead. So if it's going to be by faith, it also has to have a natural component to it. Mm. Your healing is by faith. 
But it also Amen. has to have a natural component to it. But God is taking the spiritual and he's taking the physical and he brought them together and he created the man known as Adam. Yes, he he created the woman known as Eve. He brought these things together so that he might be glorified in the earth. Hallelujah. Sure, when you Amen. look at Bereshit 1, Genesis 1, you see that God spoke and it was. Yes. Spoke and it was. Spoken it was. That's the spiritual yes. attitude. That's how it works in the spirit. But let me tell you how it works in the physical. Yes. God formed the man out of his own two hands. Yes, he, he formed did. the man out of the dust of the ground. Of the he placed the man in that garden. Yes, he, he went did. ahead and planted the garden with his own two hands. Notice how God worked in the physical and he also works in the spiritual. I'm yes. telling you, we need to yes. get smart. We need to do the things that God did. He showed us in the scripture. He showed us in the book of Barashit, which you call Genesis, just how to do it. And I'm going to tell you, God is revealing now in these days just how we can overcome. Not only in the spirit, but in the physical. In the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, yes. our Lord and Savior. You folks over in Israel, you Ethiopians, God bless you. Hold on, because not too long from now, you'll be victorious, yes, even Lord. in the midst of your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, while he was talking, I heard the Lord Please. say this. God does not look at color. He looks at your heart. He don't see black, and he don't see the white, and he don't see, the, he don't see any of the other colors that people are always judging one another yep. over. Yes. He looks at your heart. And your heart had better be tuned in to the Word of God and tuned in to Him. Otherwise, you're going to be in some major trouble. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. hallelujah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, my dear brothers, take note wow. of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all the moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, yes. which can save you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Do not merely listen yes. to the word, and that's what 99.9% .9 of religion does. They'll listen to the word, mm -hmm. but they will not do what it says. Come on. Mm -hmm. Tell it. Mm hmm Absolutely, Mama. That's the truth. It is. Tell it. You go to church, you clap your hands, you roll in the floor, you dance, you shout, you carry on, and you go outside the house, and you're ending up either, either in a club somewhere, or you're doing something that God is not pleased with, or you're living with a man that you're not supposed to be living with, man living with man, woman living with woman. That is not God's word. And I'm telling you something. I heard what what Pastor Rock said a while ago that God is watching and judgment is on the way in a way that we've never seen it before. You better get ready. You can shut me off. You can do whatever you want to. But I'm just telling you what I feel in my spirit that God is saying enough is enough and I see Him doing this right here. Mm. And when He does this right here, He did this he did this whenever his son became a bundle of sin mm. on the cross. Wow. He looked, he saw sin, and he turned away. And what did Jesus do? He cried out, my God, my God, why? My daddy, 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 why have you forsaken me? Mm. He did it wow. with his son. Do you think he ain't going to do it with you? Come on. Right. Oh, my God. Do not merely listen to the word. Do not merely just read it and not apply it. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. I had a young man come in my office and he was fussing and arguing about family and he was just lorating his wife and lorating the children. Mm. I said, hold it, buddy, hold it. Mm. I said, I want you to go in my bathroom and I want you to look in that mirror and I want you to say the things that you just got through saying to me. I want you to hear and see what you're saying and I want you to look and see you. Mm. 
Mm. He shut his mouth and walked out the door, and I ain't seen him again in there since. Mm. Mm. Blew up. You know what? Be careful what you say because God's going to judge you on that. Yes, ma'am. Be careful what you do because God's going to judge you on that as well. The man who looks intently into the perfect law and that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Hallelujah. When you read the Word of God and you hear the Word of God and you apply the Word of God to your life and you're honest with God on a daily basis, God will bless you. Amen. But you can hear the Word of God and you can clap your hands and just act like you're really serving God and walk out the door and go to the bar and, 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 and go and, and, and have shack up with the woman or the man or whatever you're doing that goes against the Word. And I'm telling you something, there'll come a time when you'll stand before God and He's going to look at you and say, I don't even know who you are. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. That's the truth, Mama. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Ha, my Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is in itself set on fire by hell. With the tongue we praise our Lord and our Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to say that again. I want you to hear it. I want you to get your fingers out of your ears and I want you to clean your ears out and I want you to hear what God's Word is saying because this is God's Word. I ain't saying this. I'm just reading what the Word of God has to say and I want all of you who's listening overseas in the United States of America that's talking against God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all you Islamic people that are cursing God the Father and you worshiping idols, let me tell you something, if you don't get it right, you're going to bust hell wide open. Mm. With Come the on. tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. And Come out on. of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? No. Cannot. It cannot. My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. We have to be careful. We got to pay attention. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yes. Submit yourselves then in God. We must resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We must come near to God, and he will come near to you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I prayed about what the Lord wants me to share, but I'm telling you what's the truth. We have got to understand that the devil is real, He's out to steal, he's out to kill, and he's out to destroy. And I wrote down here that the devil knew exactly where Jesus was whenever he was being deceived, whenever the man put the kiss of death on him. The devil knew where Jesus was, and if he knew where Jesus was, he also knows where you are, and guess what? He hates you. Mm -hmm. Anytime something contrary to the word of God comes up into your spirit it is it comes from the enemy and you got a right to open up your mouth and you got a right to speak to that spirit and tell it that you're not going to listen to it and you got the right to send it into the abyss and there's an angel standing there to open that door and that spirit has to go in and the door is locked hallelujah come on come on i've never heard I really, in my whole life, I've never heard anybody share anything with me about the abyss. Me neither. 
I never knew about the abyss, and I was reading it in my scriptures. I read it over uh, in in Revelation, and I believe it speaks of it in Luke's as well. Uh, about the abyss and I started reading and studying on that and there's a difference in the abyss there's a difference in hell and there's a difference in the lake of fire I found that out now y'all may know it you, you people looking but I never knew it God gave me that revelation and anytime something tries to attack my body that goes against what the word of God has to say guess what I'll open my mouth I'll begin to plead the blood of Jesus over my spirit my mind and my body and I'll speak to that spirit and I'll say look you're trespassing on God's property I send you into the abyss and he has to go yes. it does go Hallelujah. that that feeling will leave yes. we need to put the work we need to put this word to work because he just got through saying faith without works and what are works we say this just about every every Saturday faith without works is what Dead. Dead. what is works what is works rabbi what is, is works doing what God has appointed us to do as believers in Jesus Christ it is yes. doing exactly what this word has to say and believing what this word has to say whether you feel it or not yes ma'am you believe in it yes, you're standing on it Hallelujah. My God. Well, today, we just thank God for His love, yes. for bringing us thank to another, yes. uh, another day of worship, yes. another day of, of fellowship, another day of sharing the Word. And, and uh, it, it, it's, 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 I look forward to this every week. Uh, and we're going to do the, the precious uh, Lord's Passover meal. We're going to do the Lord's Supper. It ain't called communion anymore because that's not of God. Uh, God didn't give the, give, give the Lord's Supper and the Lord's Passover meal the word communion. That came from a religion that one of these days they're going to realize and understand they've been in error, and that's the Catholic religion. But we're, we're going to do the precious, precious Lord's Supper, the Lord's Passover meal, because when Jesus was with his disciples around the table, he told them, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of what I have done for you. Yes, Lord. And he held up the the juice and he held up the yes, he held up the bread. Yes, sir. And he told them. And when I look at this, and you've heard me say it so many times, and I sit there in that chair and and I, I my mind goes into the depth of the suffering that our Savior went through. Yes. Yeah. People don't stop and think about that, what he went through. But the brown marks on this bread represents the horrible beating. And I read in the scriptures where they had pulled his cloth off and put a, a robe on him and put a beat the crown on him and, and, and they were making fun of him and they bowed down at his feet and acted like they was worshiping him. Then they crawled up there and they blindfolded him. They took their fist and they started beating him in his face. Come on, Lord. Come on. Now, you know, they didn't just tap him in his face. They wasn't, they wasn't one or two that was doing it. There was a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And they blindfolded. They beat him in his face and they said, If you are who you say you are, prophesy who hit you. Now, you know, if Jesus had prophesied who hit them, I think they'd have probably fainted. They'd have probably dropped dead <laughs> because it would have shocked them so bad. But he knew everyone that hit him with that fist. Yes, and then they spit on him. Mm. And then they pulled his beard off. Mm. And then they pierced his side. And boy, that was a shocker because not only did blood come out, but water came out too. Yeah. And it shocked a lot of those that were... Wow. had the spear and they realized that this man was really who he says he was. Wow. That's right. I never heard that. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Mm -hmm. Read the scripture. It does. Uh, and, 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 and they, they just, the, the, the brown marks, uh, the, it represents the beating that he took on his yeah. body. 
Jesus. For healing. For your healing. For my healing. For every kind of disease that the devil has created that he places on you for you to run to the doctor and the doctor wants to make it worse. Jesus says you're healed in the name Come of on. Yeshua. Come on. Yes, we lift up this bread. Yes, we and Father, we ask that you bless it because yes. it represents the horrible beating yes. that your son Yeshua took for my healing yes. and for the healing of every person on the face of this earth that will receive it. Yes. We ask that you bless this bread yes. as we partake of it in Jesus' name. Yes. He broke the bread yes. and he said, take and eat. Amen. I never knew the importance of breaking the bread. And nobody had ever taught me anything about breaking the bread. And one day I was reading scripture, Luke 24, 29 through 34, where these young men were talking to Jesus and they did not realize who he was. And and they were talking amongst themselves and Jesus came up and he wanted to know. He said, what are you guys talking about? What's going on? And they said to him, well, have you not heard what has happened to a man? They put him on a cross. They crucified him. They beat him. You not heard any of that? And Jesus kept talking to them and uh, they kept explaining to him what was going on and it was late in the evening and Jesus was getting ready to leave, uh, to go. And as they was approaching the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he was going to go further. But these young people urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in and he stayed with them. We was at the table with them, he took when he was when Jesus was at the table with these men, he took bread and he gave thanks. And guess what he done? He broke the bread and it began to give and began to give it to them and the word says then their eyes was opened and they recognized who he was. Now the breaking of the bread when you do your Passover meal or your or your Lord's Supper the breaking of that bread is very important. Amen. I never realized that until God spoke to me sitting in that chair one morning mm -hmm. and he said, daughter, break the bread. I didn't understand that. But then when I read this in the scripture, because he took me to the scripture and gave it to me, I knew that my God had spoken to me and it was a revelation. And I promise you, I promise you, when you go according to the Word of God, revelation will come to you. Yes, Lord. And, and you've got to share it. Man, I tell you, yes, you've got to share it. So when you do your yes. Lord's Supper or the Passover yes. meal, always break the bread Absolutely. before you partake of it. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Lord, we lift up this juice into your presence that represents the precious blood that Yeshua, your Son, and our Savior yes. shed yes. on that cross yes. when they nailed that crown of thorns into his skull, they beat it into his skull. Yes. When they nailed his hands and his feet to the cross, they pierced his side. Thank you. They made fun of him, Father. Yes. This juice represents the precious blood that our Savior, Yeshua, and your Son shed for the sins of this world. And Father, we ask that you bless it this morning as we partake of it in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. It is very, very important that we are reminded of what our Savior went through. But I'm here to tell you this. Wherever you go to church, and they do, they call it the Lord's Supper. 
It's not the Lord's Supper, it's the Passover meal. You need to judge yourself. You don't need to partake of it until you are completely honest with God. Father, whatever is in me that I don't know that's in me, that you know that's in me, bring it to the surface and show it to me, Father. Help me to overcome it. Deliver me from it because I don't want nothing in my life that will separate me from you. If you drink or take the Passover meal and you have not repented of your sins, then I'm telling you, the Bible says a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. If we judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world. We should never do, eat or drink the Lord's Supper unworthy. We should never do that. Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner would be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of Jesus. Wow. So anytime you go to church and you do this, Make sure before you do this that you have repented, that you prayed a prayer, that you mean it in your heart, that it is sincere. Because if you don't, guess what? You will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And I don't want to sin against the body of Jesus Christ. And I sure don't want to sin against that blood because that blood is our cleansing. Yes. Yes, Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes. I'm going to turn this over to... Rock, Rabbi Rock, because I know he's got a word this morning. We just want to say thank you guys for, for yes. fellowshipping with us. If you got any kind of questions or if you got yes. uh, prayers that needs that you that, that 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 we need to pray, we'll stop right there and pray for you right then. Let us know because that's what we're here for. We're here Amen. to serve Jesus Christ. We're not here for a pat on the back. We are servants of God. We don't. We don't. Uh, we don't walk around with titles on us. Jesus Christ was a servant of God. Yes, he, he was God's son, but he became a servant because if you go and read what he done, he washed the foot of the man that that betrayed him. He washed the foot of the man that denied him, mm -hmm. and he washed the feet of the of the rest of the children of Israel. Of the the rest of the disciples, they went back fishing. He became a servant and he did all of it. If Jesus Christ can humble himself and do that, who do, who do we think we are? That's right. We certainly yes. aren't any better. Come on up. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Beautiful. Hallelujah. You know what I said. Awesome job. 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 Never do. Awesome job. 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 Father, we want to thank you today, hallelujah, for the ongoing ministry of Jesus Christ here in the earth through Trinity Kingdom Connection. Amen. We want to thank you, Lord, hallelujah, for your grace and your mercy, O oh God, for your loving kindness and your outstretched arm, O oh God. We want to thank you, Father, for everything that you've done for us, Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. And how you're bringing us daily, Father, to the fulfillment of your plan. Yes. There's changes going on in our lives. Sometimes we don't want to accept those changes, <laughs> but they're going to happen anyway. Woo! Hallelujah. And it hurts to die to self-centered self. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Tell you. The truth. And as we begin to understand that these things are in the plan of God, and until we understand that they're in the plan of God, we'll never fully accept it. And these things, and it's not you're going to stop it. You're not going to hinder them. Those things that God has called forth by his sovereign power will come into being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was in study, and I was calling on the name of the Lord, hallelujah, he took me over to the second Kings mm -hmm. and talked about a man named Naaman, Naaman. Actually, it would be the way that you say his name. And this is a man who had a problem with 
a disease called leprosy. Mm -mm -mm. Now, I, I want to make some analogies here. Many of us have a spiritual type of leprosy. That's right. And, you know, that spiritual leprosy is really sin. It's sin in the inward person, and it's sin in our lives. So, unless we deal with this sin problem, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we'll never get cured of that leprosy, that kind of leprosy. Mm -hmm. Now, sin has a way of manifesting itself in our lives through 39 root diseases. Now, isn't it interesting that Jesus Christ took 39 stripes on his back? My God. He took 39 wounds. That, that's, that's, that's not talking about the suffering of the beatings and his beard being pulled out no, and yeah. the piercings mm -hmm. and the many times that they struck him. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about now is that there was 39 specific times that he was wounded for our healing. Amen. But I want you to notice this. I want to put I want to put the rest of this together for us. Mm -hmm. We've been taught erroneously that it's only in the spiritual, and we've been waiting for it to manifest in the natural. Mm. Now we've been teaching here for some years that it's not only the spiritual, but it's also the physical. That's in true. fact, if you listen to the book of James that was recited by Pastor just a few minutes ago, it said that the man who looks intently into the Word of God, and then when he closes the book and turns away, he forgets what he looks like. That's exactly wow. right. That's a man who reads the Word, but does not do what Don't it says. Don't apply it, right. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now there's an application. There is a suitable application every time that we go into the Word. Mm -hmm. Now Naaman, who is a general of the King of Aram. Mm -hmm. What's the scripture? If it's uh, first, excuse me, Second Kings five. Five. Okay. Go into verse one, and we'll go all the way, just about all the way through the chapter, okay. and um, and I'll read some of it to us. Mm -hmm. But I want to sit there and I want to talk about what Naaman had to overcome. Naaman was told wow. by a little girl that they had literally abducted from Israel. Now this is the enemies of Israel. Wow. Israel was pretty, pretty much subjected to them at this point in time because they had not been obedient to God's word. Now that's what happens in our lives as well. When you have the spiritual problem of sin, now let me say something to you. When you go before the Lord, this is how we really need to understand what the scripture says to us. When you go before the Lord, what do you judge by? What do you judge by? You're judged by everything that's done, done, done in the body. That's right. You're judged by everything you said out of your mouth. That's right. You're judged by not so much every thought that you've had, but every thought that you put into practice. That's right. Now, if you're putting the word of the Lord into practice, guess what? You'll be judged according, accordingly. Mm -hmm. But if you've not put the word of the Lord into practice, guess what? You'll be judged accordingly. That's right. God is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. Now... We're not talking about your church tradition. We are talking about the living Word of God. Now, why do we call it the living Word? Because God's alive. Amen. He will not die. He cannot die. Jesus Christ came in the flesh, and His flesh suffered death on our behalf. Mm -hmm. But His Spirit was very much alive. That's in right. fact, it's through the power of His indestructible Spirit that He spoke into that body, and it became a new and living creature. He did not resurrect in the same human body as he went into the grave with. He went into the grave with a human body. But when he was resurrected out of the grave, he had a spiritual yes, he and human body. Yes, he did. It was something that was not only of the spiritual realm, but of the physical realm. Mm -hmm. The faith of God causes us and calls for us to put the spiritual and the physical mm -hmm. together. That's why Jesus Christ, number one, had to be born in a human body. Mm -hmm. That's why number two, Jesus Christ had to suffer a real physical death on the cross. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's why Jesus Christ had to be rejoicing when he suffered, if you want to put it that way, actually he it was jubilant over an active and real resurrection. That's true. Praise Praise so God. your Hallelujah. faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about healing. Hallelujah. This man Naaman who suffered from leprosy. In fact, that's 2 Kings 5, verse 1. I'm going to read a little bit of it. 
And uh, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to go down to verse four here just a little bit. Naaman went to his master, the king, and told him what the girl from Israel had said. Now, this is the little girl whom they had abducted and talked about there is a, a prophet in Israel. Mm -hmm. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman, or not Ammon, left taking with him king. ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and uh, ten sets of clothing. The letter which he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure, cure him, him of his leprosy. Hallelujah. Let me say something to you. Hallelujah. You want to make God mad? You go up to any man, I don't care who it is, any pastor, any person. <laughs> Preaching, man. And you go and say, Pastor, I need you to heal me. I need, I, need, I need you to cure me. I know that, that God hears your prayers. And I know that if you pray for me, I'll be healed. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what. That's a blasphemy of idolatry before God. In the world, thank you. Wow. Thank you Even the king of Israel knew it. Because this was his reply to that idolatry was Can this. Oh, yeah, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, it tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Wow. Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? Wow. See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. Wow. Now going down to the next verse. Yeah, when Elisha, or Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had tore his robes, he sent him the message. Why have you tore your robes? Has the man come to me? And he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. Mm -hmm. So Naaman went to uh, went with his horses and chariots, and stopping at the door the door of Elisha's house, Elisha sent a message to him to say, "Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be clean." I'm going to say it right now. No, no, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> this guy Naaman, Naaman, is just like you. He got mad. He's just like you. <laughs> the word of God came to him, given to him by a reliable witness. Now, let me say a couple of things to you now. Mm -hmm. Many of you listen to prophets who aren't reliable. That's true. They're self-appointed and self-anointed. God right. didn't anoint them and God didn't appoint them. That's right. They go ahead and they begin to tell you things that's on their hearts and their minds, and a lot of times they got the hands out. This is, I'm going to tell you, this is the first sign that you're knowing, that you're dealing with a known demon. When they got their hands out. I will not, listen to me now. I will not pray for you unless you give me money. Wow. That's a demon. That's right. That's a false prophet, and that's a demon of the devil. We okay. saw that. <laughs> okay. Now this man, sitting there going before God, and the Lord told him through the prophet Elisha, or Elisha, basically telling him, I want you to go to the muddy waters of the Jordan and I want you to bathe seven times. Mm. Now many of you may be thinking he went in the water and bathed one time and then turned right around went in the water, bathed second time, turned right around. I want to tell you, it didn't happen like that. Mm -hmm. Over a period of weeks, mm. this man went once. Many of you remember back in the old days, we took a bath once a week, not mm -hmm. every day. We didn't shower two or three times a day. Mm -hmm. We worked hard all week long, but when it came time for the Sabbath, we went to the bath. Mm -hmm. We cleaned ourselves up, getting ready for the Sabbath to come. Mm -hmm. Now, many of you did the same thing for Sunday going to meet. You were out there working hard all week. When you came in, you may have washed your face and washed yourself up a little bit, but you didn't take that bath that got you all together clean until the end of the week and you changed your clothes and you presented yourself before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Many many of you can look at that and you know that that's true. But this man was offended not only in the word of God but he was offended in the prophet who told him to go into the muddy waters and bathe. And he, and he, he complained. And so isn't there beautiful, clean, pristine waters that I can go and, and bathe in like the Tigris and the Euphrates wow. up running through Aram. Uh, these beautiful, why would I go go and bathe in this nasty water of the Jordan? Mm. I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to tell you 
This is the reason that God spoke to me last night and this morning of what he's about to do in this ministry. Oh my God. Come on up here. Mm -hmm. Come on up here. I want you to tell the story. <laughs> All right. Take your mm -hmm. time with it. Hi there, guys. I just want to give you a little update on some things that we're working on. I've been a part of this company, Longevity, for about 20 years, uh, in, in about 18 years to be totally honest. And I work with a doctor named Dr. Joel Wallach. And many years ago when I first started listening to the story of Doc, he would tell the story about how he was working in Africa. And what brought the desire for him to understand about minerals was watching the animals. And he would notice that the animals would pass by those beautiful, pristine, clean waterfalls, the springs, and they would not even go there to drink or to bathe. They would go over to the dark water, to the muddy, nasty looking water, Dr. Wallach thought, and they would just drink and get in and roll around and lap it up, and he really, he, he struggled with understanding why. And so he took an, a little analysis of the water, and when he came back to the States, he done an, a, an analysis of the water to get a full understanding of exactly what those animals were drinking and, and why they chose the muddy water versus the clean, pretty water. And come to find out, the muddy waters were full of minerals. And you see, our Father Lord, when He made us, He made us from the dust of the earth. Mm -hmm. The things that our bodies are still made from. And the body breaks down and it begins to fall apart when we're not putting the right proper minerals back in the body. The body is actually made of 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and three fatty acids. And it's such a beautiful thing when the body begins to heal and correct itself. I can give many testimonies and many, many stories of Indian shamans and billionaires that the minerals by the grace of our good Lord has placed within this soil, have healed these people. And as we move forward through um, Trinity and through the message here of uh, our Father Lord, we're gonna introduce you guys to Dr. Joel Wallach. He's a, he's a, a lovely older gentleman that um, has got brilliance beyond my imagination. And he gives all the glory to the Lord He's got a book that's in the Smithsonian Institute that's a national treasure. He's had to sue the FDA nine times. <laughs> he's traveled around and won every case. He's had traveled around this beautiful world doing autopsies on 1,200 children to understand that the reason those babies were dying was just a lack of the selenium in the soil. And now those children get selenium every day when they go to school. And they've had no deaths in Kishan's Providence, China since then and so I give all the glory to the Lord and I, I have certainly listened to Dr. Wallach over the years and it's gave me great joy to see many of my friends be healed and I'd like to let you know that if you want to reach out through Kennedy through Trinity Kingdom Connection through Pastor Dolores's Facebook page or Rabbi Rockman's Facebook page my information will be on there and I take the calls about any time of the day so don't hesitate to give me a buzz and we'll get you on the path of healing and uh, show you what the good Lord has made our bodies out of. Amen. I thank you so much for listening this afternoon. Have a wonderful, blessed day. And remember, Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Wow. See, now many of you think, well, that's kind of unusual. We've, we've <laughs> never done this before. But we did it today. See, here in Trinity Kingdom Connection, we deal with the spiritual aspect of it. But God is beginning to speak to us about dealing also with the physical aspect of healing. That's right. If you want total healing for the spirit, soul, and mind, sometimes it's going to take a little bit more than you just praying. It's going to take you doing what the Word says. And this is something we've been saying all along. It's not just, we're praying to the Lord, absolutely, about this covenant of love. But then we go out and we do that which he has prescribed by his word for us to do. I'm going to say, now, notice the word I use there. I use the word prescribed. The Lord God is prescribing as a way of healing our bodies his word. That's, that's part of it. But he's also given us a physical work that we must do. He says, here, I want you to pray. 
He says, here, I want you to celebrate Passover. I want you to celebrate my Sabbath. I want you to celebrate these seven festivals because my word is healing to all your flesh. I want to tell you right there, and there's millions of you watching us right now, that the Lord God is revealing even the deep things of God out of 1 Corinthians 2, 7. And these deep things of God, I'm telling you folks, have now bring, brought us to a place where we can take physical minerals that will renew and replenish our physical Amen. bodies. Now, we still have a spiritual work to do. There's a reason why God is healing our physical bodies, because he's getting us ready for a great move of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There's something God is tired of seeing his people sick, wounded, spiritually just, just, just off balance. They don't know what to do. In fact, let me tell you, it, it may, maybe some of you will, 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 uh, re this will resonate in your heart and mind. You're out there and you want to be a testimony for the Lord. But you can't even hold yourself up. Yes. Some of you have been on crutches. Some of you have been in wheelchairs. And now you're going to be a testimony for the Lord's healing while you're still in that wheelchair? I'm going to tell you, the Lord God has sent an extra measure to help you get up out of those things which by your faith you've not been able to do it. Why has your faith suffered so greatly? Because you won't walk in the Word of God. But as you walk in the Word of God and do what the Word has prescribed for you, even through this telecast of the ongoing ministry of Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you, God is taking the holy, hallelujah, out of the spiritual, and He's added it to this physical earth, and He's given us a way to walk in physical freedom, health, and vitality. Amen. 85 years old. Pastor's 85 years old. She doesn't need to see the doctor. <laughs> she doesn't need to say take a bunch of pills. I've watched some of you younger folks sitting there. You can't, you can't get along unless you go ahead and, and take a BC powder every day for your migraine. God has an answer for your migraine. Gentlemen, you're suffering from back pain. You're suffering from leg pain. You're suffering from neuropathy. So many of you are suffering from diabetes and kidney failure and liver failure. I'm telling you, God has an answer, and the answer is right now. That's it. But you're going to have to do all that God has demanded that you do. He's not just t telling you to do it. He's demanding that you do it. Yes. But I'm going to tell you, your blood will be on your own head. If you don't listen to me today, if you haven't listened to this telecast, you said this guy is ranting and raving, I'm telling you, I used to be paralyzed. The Lord late brought me up out of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, I can't tell you how many times, even after I was healed from the paralysis, that I suffered excruciating back pain. Yes. Excruciating back pain. Yes. And then I began to be introduced to a man named uh, Joel Wallach, and the end result was, I just listened to what the man, I went and I went to the Lord with it. I said, Lord, is the man speaking the truth? Or is it just another lie by another doctor? Come on now, all there is after my money. Big farmer's after my money. He wants my wallet. He don't care nothing about my health. But I'm telling you, as I began to walk, I began to pray, began to believe God for it. I'm going to say, Lord, you know, I, I'm really not feeling 100% about this, but let me go ahead and do because I'm going to put my faith in you rather than in any man and or in any even in the minerals. Hallelujah. But the Lord began to speak to me about it. Hallelujah. Yeah. He began to say, you know, I formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. Yes. He wasn't complete until I formed his physical body. Yes. Now I said, well, Lord, you know I've been suffering from this pain. We've prayed about it. I've gone to you over. We've, we've fasted about it. We've prayed about it. I've gone over and over and over and over. And this is what the Lord said to me. Lord said to me, and it shocked me. And now often he'll say things that will shock not only you, but shock <laughs> me. And then when I tell you, it shocks you. He said, I'm not going to do what you're capable of doing yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. I said, well, Lord, how am I going to heal myself? I can't heal myself. That's why the Lord went to the cross. The primary reason that he went to the cross is for your sin. Mm-hmm. The secondary reason he went to the cross is for your salvation. Mm -hmm. And that same salvation also brings healing. Mm -hmm. But what happens is, as the Lord said this to me, he said, my people perish for lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. Yes. He said, Rocky, your problem is not your spirit. Your problem is what you don't know. 
I said, well, Lord, I'm studying your word. I'm looking at your word. He said, I've revealed things to you in my word that no one else on the earth knows. Mm -hmm. You've revealed it to rabbis. You've revealed it to ministers. And they were embarrassed by what they didn't know. Well, I've had ministers, men of high learning, come and tell me I feel like I was in kindergarten when I sit next to you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something now. Mm -hmm. There are doctors that say that about Dr. Joel Wallace. There's story after story after story of how God has brought the truth out in this latter day. Yes, and I'm going to Hallelujah. tell you, we are getting to a place right now. We're in a place right now. There's so many people suffering from all kinds of diseases, all kinds of neuropathy, all kinds of different pain in their body and stuff. How is it that if your prayer life were where it needed to be because of obedience, that you're still suffering from all of these things? And even in that, the Lord says that's only half the equation. He says, I put these things in the earth. I'm going to tell you, folks, if you're listening to the whole word of God, he's telling you it's going to take the spiritual and it's going to take the physical and he's putting these things Amen. together to make you whole, to make you healthy, and to bring you up out of the pit that you've been in. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you. Praise God. You know the saddest Ooh, thing in the world? I see cool you out on my side. Yes, Lord. Some of you have lost your parents mm -hmm. to heart attacks. And it mm. never needed to happen. That's true. I'm talking about people who love the Lord their God with their little heart, mm. scroll, soul, strength, and mind. Let me keep it in English here if I can. So many, so many of you have lost child, children, loved ones, mm -hmm. little, just little kids, yeah. to disease, mm -hmm. to the heinous crime of the devil who brought disease into the creation by perverting the things of God. Mm. God says, I'm, re I'm reversing the curse. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring the knowledge of what I have created in the creation for, excuse me, for your health. Hallelujah. I'm bringing these things back into the forefront so my people who are suffering, they're dying daily. I'm talking about not just one or two. I'm talking about hundreds and thousands are dying every day because they don't have the knowledge of God and just how to live. And there's another crime on top of it. Let me reveal the whole truth here. We've all known about what happened with Monsanto and how many people developed lung uh, disease and liver disease and all kinds of cancers in their bodies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But what you don't know is this. Mm. What about even the bread we eat? Mm. Has it been poisoned? Has it been tainted? Has it with, and now it's GMO. They've done certain things. They've even put insecticides mm -hmm. in certain plants to help guard the plant against the insects. Mm -hmm. But what's it doing to us? If it's killing cockroaches, folks, what's it doing to us? This animal can actually live through a nuclear blast. Yeah. And it's killing the cockroach? What's it doing to you? Because they put it in our food. That's right. Come on, folks. Preaching Some that. of you have suffered because you've eaten food that came from foreign countries because it was cheaper to buy it from them. But when you got it, it was filled with asbestos. Oh, my God. Yeah. The Lord is tired of seeing his people suffer yeah. because of their spiritual and their natural stupidity. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Wow. It's time for us for the sake of your own lives. Yes, Lord. It's time for us to not only get with the word of God as we should. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell you, mm -hmm. if you're taking minerals alone and your body's doing better, I'm going to tell you what, you go out and sin, you're still going to hell. Mm -hmm. That's the truth of the matter. Because it's a two-party ticket. You need to have the blood of Jesus Christ and you need to go to the cross to get it. Okay. Hallelujah. It ain't coming any other way. That's it. Yes. But when it comes down to your physical body, the Lord God gave you a prescription mm -hmm. for your healing that it's time to get in the word of God by the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. And I believe that God has appointed men and women in the earth to bring you to a place of healing yes. that you've never experienced. In fact, I'll say it this way. We've never experienced the healing that God's about to bring mm -hmm. unless we're living in the time of Jesus Christ when he was walking the earth. Thank you. Amen. He said, greater things shall you do mm -hmm. because I go to be with the Father. Yes. Hallelujah. In all this time, folks, these minerals, these vitamins, these things that are meant for our good have been here. Mm -hmm. And yet, unfruitful. 
Um, we didn't know they were here. I didn't know what to eat, what not to eat. But now the Lord God in these last days, in these end times, He's not just telling us how to live spiritually. He's telling us how to live naturally. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Because we're about to go into a thousand years of under the Lord's protection. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's He going to do? He says, he says it's going to be like the Garden of Eden out there again. Mm -hmm. Without the depleted soil, mm -hmm. not the depleted fruit. You eat the food and it's got almost no nutrients in it. In fact, what you do eat is more unhealthy for you than it is healthy. Mm -hmm. It used to be healthy for you. They changed the very nature of it so that the bread that you eat actually poisons you. Yeah. Now that's the kind of thing we got to fight. We're fighting not only on a spiritual realm, but we're fighting on a physical realm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that you've revealed the knowledge yes. through such folks yes. as Joel Wallach and so many others, hallelujah, yes. as they're beginning to begin to teach us how to live correctly for the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to tell you, has your sickness and disease stopped you from doing what God's called you to do? Has it? Mm -hmm. how, many of you, how many of you have been wounded in your legs? Mm -hmm. I, you can't barely walk from here to the door. How many times that I've seen it going through the airports, people got people being carried around in wheelchairs. I've never seen the amount of people who can't walk even a hundred yards mm -hmm. that what I've seen right now. And talk about obesity, mm. there's oh. another curse oh on the God, enemy. That is awful. How many of you wives? I'm gonna get on it now. It's awful. Because you know how I am. I spare no one and nothing. Because I'm gonna tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It may cut you like a knife. But it's time for you to hear the whole word of God. How many of you women have lost your husbands because of your obesity? That's the truth. You get, there's something going on in the inside of your body, and it's, and it's come. It, it's, it's become like a. Uh, help me with the word in English. It, it, it's something you just you cr a craving. You just you just can't go without it. Yeah. You've got to have the bread. You've got to have this over here. And you've got to eat, 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 eat. And I'm going to tell you what. Your body is starving for nutrition and you can't get enough. There's Absolutely. the key. That's it. You're sitting there going, oh my God, help me. Oh my God, help me. I can't stand the fast because your body is already in a starvation mode. Yep. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's time that the Lord has given us the knowledge to go ahead that we might live for him. Yes, Lord. This, is, this is the truth of the gospel. The Lord made you powerful warriors. Hallelujah. Some of you women that are out there, you suffer from all kinds of things. So many of you, there's there, more and more women are dying of heart attack right now because they're so overweight. And because they're missing those, how many nutrients was it, Fred? 90. 90 essential nutrients. How many fatty acids? Three. Three. Okay. 16 vitamins. And 16 vitamins. So many of you will take a one a day. You'll take a woman's vitamin. Thank God you're doing something. Yeah. But it's not enough. Let's go on and finish the course. Let's go and run the race with patience. But let's do it for Jesus Christ. Let's be the best we can be for Him. Not just for ourselves. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so many of you need to come out of that, that lifestyle. The beer and the alcohol is killing you. Ooh. I'm telling you. It's a poison to your body. Yes, it is. And the craving for it is because you're so malnourished in your body mm -hmm. that you you won't eat food because you're yeah, trying to that. get it out of salts and sugars and all these kinds of things. You're poisoning yourself mm -hmm. daily. But Jesus Christ has an answer. He has a viable, livable answer you can hold in your hand. Yeah. Some of you ain't got the faith to get from here to the door mm -hmm. because you're not sure your legs will take you that far. That's why it's so hard for you to, to believe in the Word. You'll sit there and you'll pray the Word, Oh God, heal me. Oh God, heal me. Oh God, heal me. Heal me. But you won't do anything. Mm -hmm. You sit on your hands. You won't do anything. But I prayed and I don't know what else to do. We're here to help you to know what else to do. We're here to help you to get back on track. We're here to help you to commit yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ and from there to go ahead and be warriors for Him. Not to be embarrassed of, of the old, I mean, we're not just talking about overweight. Wait, we're talking about the obesity. Yes. In the, in, in the church and in America particularly. Mm -hmm. When there's people around the world that are living 120, 130, and 140 years old. It's all nutritional yeah. deficiencies. Yeah. 
Well, what did the doc say about nutritional, uh, natural causes of death? It's 100% a nutritional deficiency. Yeah. He died of natural causes. Yeah. Well, if he was under 120 years old, it wasn't a natural cause that killed him. It was a, de a, a deficiency of, go ahead. Nutrients. Of nutrients that mm -hmm. killed him. Yeah. Your body can't run on nothing. Yeah. It's got to have these nutrients, and it's got to have these vitamins, and it's got to have these amino acids that, I mean, what is it that the brain has to live on? It has cholesterol. To cholesterol. Thank you. How often have you been told, oh, you're going to get your cholesterol down? Yes. A lie straight from the pit of hell. Anything that's going to cost you your life is a lie from the devil. That's what we need to start separating the holy and the profane. We need to start looking at the spiritual and know that this whole natural world has been created out of what God said in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it's time to start thinking with our whole minds, left and right brain, if you will, mm -hmm. so that we might stand on the word of God and put it into practice in this physical Hallelujah. world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to tell you, you may look at me and say, man, this guy's on fire. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, I'm not on fire. Mm -hmm. But I know the Holy Spirit is. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, as he was beginning to speak to me about these things, mm -hmm. to begin to bring these things to pass. I mean, I'm sitting there going, what's a dirty, what's a dirty water pool in the middle of Africa got anything to do with my prayers, Lord? I'm praying for the people of Africa. I'm not praying for the dirty water in Africa. Mm -hmm. And yet that's what he brought to me over and over and over again. I'm looking at going, okay, okay. I don't, I don't. My mind was unfruitful. Mm -hmm. Yet when the Lord began to kind of peel back some of the layers and reveal to me why I needed to look at this a little bit closer, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what. It took a man who was there. It took a man that had noticed that the animals were going and drinking this muddy, dirty, nasty water. And he's looking, why are they going to that when we got this beautiful stream over here? Mm -hmm. But they completely ignored it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what, folks. That the Lord God is beginning to reveal some deep hidden things. Yes, He is. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Right out of the earth. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's beginning to do what He did in the beginning. He formed the man, Adam, out of the dust yes, of the yes, ground. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? He's going to repair your body out of the dust of the ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. Yes, Lord. He's going to repair your body. And not only that, once your body is repaired and you begin to give Him the praise, what do you think that's going to do for your spirit? Holy. How many of you folks, let me ask you folks, your children in the Cancer Institute right now, mm -hmm. I've seen God heal cancers. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, let's go back and lay hands on more children. We saw five of them uh, healed in the children's ward. And it was healed of all kinds of cancers. And we were in before the Lord for 21 days. I mean, I got everybody that I knew in the body of Christ, whether they were living a little on the word or they were deep into it. I said, look, let's put all our differences behind us. Let us pray together, believing and agreeing in Christ Jesus, because where one puts a thousand of flight, two put ten thousand of flight. We had thousands of people joined together in prayer for this one child. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But the Lord showed us a better way. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus showed us a better way. He said, I love your prayers. I love that you all got together. But many of you are in sin. Many of you are half-hearted. Many of you don't believe. Many of you are out there in the world. Many of you are still going to the club. The end result is, I can't do much with that. He said, but I can do this, though. I'll show you how to live a victorious life. Mm -hmm. And it's still going to be up to you, folks, as you're victorious in your body and you begin to live for Jesus Christ, then you'll gain the whole victory. The whole victory of the Word of God. Hallelujah. As he begins to eradicate cancers, mm -hmm. and all kinds of neuropathies, mm -hmm. all kinds of migraines, and tumors, and those things which are plaguing the body of Christ, I'm going to tell you, God is interested in healing his body. Amen. Hallelujah. And this is what we're, this is, I mean, the Lord God has said, look, I want you to step forward on this. I want you to step out. He said, now, Rocky, he says, I've never had a problem with you stepping out before. He says, but this might stretch you to the limit. <laughs> now, you know, I, I heard someone say yesterday, I'm from Missouri, the show me state. <laughs> and that's when I got together, Brandy and I talked about it. I said, well, you're going to have to show me. You're going to have to give me 
those minerals and vitamins and the nutrients and amino acids and I'm going to see if they work because I'm not telling a lot of these folks they've been lied to enough That's right. Absolutely. not only by doctors but by lawyers and Indian chiefs yes. how many times a pastor come and pray for you but he got his hand out the whole time mm -hmm. somebody prayed for you but he was leading you into the back room mm. <laughs> you'll pay for that you better get on your knees you know where I'm talking to? Hallelujah. God will deal with you. And as he begins, and I, and, I, and I just feel this in my heart, as God begins to repair your body, and begins to repair your life, naturally speaking, yes. he's also going to be doing a repair work yes. in you spiritually. Yes. Now some of you are going to keep going on to what you've always done, mm -hmm. and you know what? That's unfortunate. But you can't say that the Lord didn't help me. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, this is what God is doing today. God is taking away your accusation. Mm -hmm. Many of you have had an accusation against God. I'm digging in it now. Mm -hmm. The down low from the cloud. Mm -hmm. Many of you have had an accusation against God. Well, God don't hear my prayers because I still got this tumor. God don't hear my prayers because my, my wife's still dying of diabetes. Mm -hmm. Now, you eat terribly. And that's got nothing to do with it. You want to blame God for that, even though that's because that's your fault. The end result is that God is going to show you how to live victoriously in your physical body so that you can be victorious in the spiritual realm. I'm going to tell you what. You can give all the money you got to Ken Copeland and the rest of them. <laughs> it ain't going to buy you one day. Amen. It ain't going to buy you a moment. Amen. It ain't going to cure you of your diseases. Mm. They can lay hands on you till you're smothered with nothing more than hands. Not God. That's right. That's all they are is men. They are not God. You mm -hmm. can put them up on a big pedestal, and I'm going to tell you what. Get yourself a taller ladder if you want to put them up a little higher. Yes. But I don't care nothing for it. Yes. We're here to help you on the road to healing. Mm -hmm. Spirit, soul, mind, and, and body. body. Hallelujah. And there's some of you out there wrestling with demon spirits and stuff and demons in your mind. Demons you created yourself. But I'm going to tell you, when you get yourself right with Christ, you get yourself right with his word, hallelujah, you get yourself right even in your physical body, I'm going to tell you what, you'll begin to stand, standing therefore on the whole word of God, not the traditions of men. And you'll stand and you will be victorious even in this life. Hallelujah. What a victory for you, Grandma or Grandpa, to be able to play with your children, mm -hmm. to run up and down through the yard, mm -hmm. not to be suffering from joint pain, not to be suffering from back pain, not to be suffering from arthritis. It ain't your arthritis anyway. Amen. Stop claiming it. But now the Lord God has said, I'm going to help you in a special way. I'm going to go the extra measure and bring you to healing. Hallelujah through his precious blood, and through the anointing of what he has done in the creation. And this is, this is what I, he told me to say today. I'm thanking God for it, and we're beginning to move forward. Hallelujah. And as we do, I want you to contact, contact Trinity Kingdom Connection, and let us help you on the road to healing. It didn't t you know what? It didn't take a day for you to get sick. And there is a side effect. There's a side effect to this. Just like all the medicines you take, you read about the side effects. You know what the side effect to doing things God's way is? Mm -hmm. You'll get better. That's the only side effect. Can I share a testimony? Go right ahead. Come on. <laughs> what happened to me? Many years ago, when I was going through the change of life, I was uh, breaking out in night sweats awfully bad and I went to my doctor and I told him about the night sweats and he prescribed a medication for me. Mm -hmm. Well I come home and I got on my internet and I put that medication in there and I looked at the side effects. Mm. I want to tell everybody, the medication that you're taking always has side effects. Mm -hmm. And if you don't research it and find out, it may cure what 
uh, help you with some of the stuff that you're dealing with, but it's going to bring on the side effects and you've got other problems and therefore you've got to go back to the doctor and he'll give you medicine for that side effect which is going to create more problems. But what he done to me, he gave me, uh, and I can't it's been so many years ago, I forgot what the name of the medication was, but I looked at it and it had side effects. And I looked up the side effects and, and what it would do to my body and I'm thinking, why would I want to take that one medicine that's going to create a problem with me having other problems in my body? So I went back to the doctor and I refused to take the medication. And uh, he put it on my records and the insurance that we was under at that time sold to another insurance company and uh, my name was there, so they wanted to check my records, and they found out I refused to take the medicine that the doctor told me to take. Therefore, I was without any kind of insurance for five years wow. until I turned old enough for Medicare to kick in, and I never used Medicare. I'm 85 years old. I do not take any kind of medication, don't intend to take any kind of medication. I do my my Lord's Supper, my Passover meal every morning. That's the best medication that you could ever Amen. want to take uh, to start your day off. And I do the different vitamins that, that God introduced me to a young man Amen. years and years ago that put me on vitamins. And I've been taking vitamins. Uh, I'll be 86 this coming October, which is about three months from now. But ever since I was very, very young, uh, I want to say I was in my maybe late 20s or maybe early 30s. I have not taken any kind of medication, don't intend to take no kind of medication except God's medication and the word that he's talking about here. This is the best medication you can Amen. take. Hallelujah. It's helped all your flesh. But what, is, what, what he's talking about, it does, but there's, there's other medications that we can, I mean other vitamins and minerals and, and the things that we're supposed to take for our bodies that helps us to overcome. Uh, and I noticed that something that I've been taking, I don't know what it is that, that my friend has given to me, I noticed I don't have the joint problem in my Amen. in my ankles like I've been having. So it's working and, and God, if, if you will stay before the Lord and stay in the Word and, and uh, do that Passover meal, that Lord's Supper every yes. morning, and get in that word and apply it. Let me tell you what, if you will do that, God will not allow you to be deceived about anything pertaining to you or your body. That's right. 85 years old, I don't do medicine. Hallelujah. Don't intend to do medicine. Don't intend to go to no doctor. Uh, the Lord can just take me home, and that's just the way it's going to be. But I just want everybody to understand that, uh, no, I, I, I'm fine to get up. I go to work every day. Amen. Every Well, every day, except on Thursdays, and I don't work on Thursdays. I don't work on, on Saturday. But I drive, I still drive a pickup truck, the truck that my husband uh, bought back in 2003. I go to work every day. I don't take medication. And uh, mm -hmm. my, my whole life is all about Jesus and telling other people about the love of God, and I just want everybody to understand that. All right. Hallelujah. Pastor. Wonderful testimony, Pastor. All right. Well, there's the living proof. It's right there. There's the living proof. Hallelujah. Yes. Lord. If you've birthday's got coming up, be 86. And you've got time. sugar addictions. You've got salt addictions. Mm -hmm. You've got addictions to certain foods. All these things are all caused by you have a deficiency in your physical body. Yes, sir. And the Lord God is, is literally saying to us all, no matter if we're 86 or if we're 6, That's true. or we're still in the womb. Mm -hmm. How many of you ladies know that you're taking prenatal vitamins? Why? To make sure that things like spinal bifida and other things do not occur in that child. You know, most of the birth defects, if not all of the birth defects, are caused by, go ahead and say Nutritional it. deficiency. Nutritional deficiency. You want to end birth defects? Let's go ahead and start eating right and doing all that God has called us to do mm -hmm. to go ahead and help this next generation not only be born healthy and whole, but to live a healthy and whole life, both spiritually 
and physically. Hallelujah. Because you're going to, you can't do it without Jesus. I'm going to tell you that right now. You can be the biggest guy on the block, but I'm going to tell you what, many a big man had been put on his back. He thought he was somebody until he met the Lord. And the Lord showed him exactly who he ain't. I know that if I got a call Goliath out, then you all haven't been listening. Hallelujah. Hmm. Dr. Wallach actually had to sue the FDA to require them to put folic acid in the prenatal vitamins Come on. to stop spinal bifida. That's and go. he had to sue them to make them put selenium in the baby food to help stop SIDS. Wow. There's two right there. Wow. Come here. Come on here. Say that in front of the camera. Come yeah. on. Come on. We're not touting Dr. Wallach here, no. but what we are doing is showing that the Lord God will share with us what we need to have. How many children have been saved from a life full of hell because of what God has shared with that man? Absolutely. You know, I just want to share a couple of things to start off with about the obesity. You know, be it man or woman, don't blame yourself. Don't beat yourself up because that's nothing other than nutritional deficiency. That's right. When you're craving sugar, that's an essential fatty acid deficiency. And when you're craving salts, that's a mineral deficiency. And, and so to hear an, any doctor tell you anything else is a lie straight from the pits of hell. Also, Dr. Wallach had to sue the FDA with money out of his own pocket. And I don't know how many of you have ever sued the FDA, now. but we're talking about a million dollars a hit, eight lawsuits. One of them was, in, and the majority of them have been within the last 20 years, um, for, for just for folic acid to be added to the women's prenatal vitamins so that the babies would quit being born with spinal bifida. What a horrible, horrible thing to have your baby born with. And many years of surgeries reconstructive surgeries as the child grows. Also, selenium. Dr. Wallach got so upset after so many mothers were being accused of murdering their babies from sleeping with them or rolling over on them, and that was a lie from the pizza, H-E double sticks, because the babies were dying of selenium deficiency, which was what was causing the SIDS. So he had to sue the, the FDA, again, to require them to put selenium in baby formula. Wow. So, guys, don't listen to all this crazy nonsense about, oh, you can't heal diabetes, you can't heal bone diseases. A lot of times when you look back at your parents and you're laying <clears> them <throat> down in the ground because they've passed away and they've shrunk by a foot, that's because they didn't have enough calcium in their body and the proper mineral cofactors to absorb the calcium. Mm -hmm. So guys, there's a way to take care of many, if not all diseases. You just have to look within 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, and three fatty acids. And I can show you how to do that. I put my number and I put the church's um, a website on uh, Young Jeff, on, um, Pastor Dolores' Facebook page, and we will also attach it to Mr. Rockman's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful, blessed day. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. What a, what a day. You get on fire now. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're obedient to the Lord, let me just say this one thing in closing. Mm -hmm. And we just want to remind you, this is Trinity Kingdom Connection, the ongoing ministry of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. here Hallelujah. on the earth. Hallelujah. You know, the God created the spiritual and he created the physical. Mm -hmm. Here in this ministry, we deal with both. Hallelujah. How many times we've seen people have to battle, try to battle on their, on their own. But we, but we realize real quick, you can't battle demons on your own. Mm -hmm. Especially when you don't know how. But if you've got the proper knowledge, then guess what? It's not long before you get the proper authority. Hallelujah. Because he's given you the authority as you were born into the earth, but you don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. Knowledge is key here. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, I'll say it again because the Lord has said it in his word. My people perish for okay. lack of knowledge. Lack of I'm knowledge. not saying my people just get sick. He's saying my people are dying for lack, for of, lack knowledge. of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God is now providing knowledge. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm through people that he's raised up by his sovereign word and by his sovereign plan, hallelujah, to go ahead and bring us to a life that we can live for him. 
We're not living it for us. We're living it for him. There is a time coming when the Lord God will raise up such a people mm -hmm. that they will cover this earth with the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you what. He's rebuilding the church. He's rebuilding his people. He's bringing them out of Mitzrayim, Egypt, sin, sickness, death, hell, and the grave. And he's bringing up a people that he can, that can stand. Hallelujah. Not only stand spiritually, but they can stand physically on their own. Mm -hmm. How will you know they're the people of God? Well, number one, because they love one another. Mm -hmm. This is love, folks. Amen. Absolutely. Number, I just, I'm going to tell you now. Mm -hmm. You don't think I don't love your family enough to share this with you? That your children not be born with or SIDS? Or be born with spinal bifida? Or any other the other various children's diseases? You don't think I don't care about you? You think this ministry doesn't care about you? I'm going to tell you what. There's many people out there who are sitting and they're trying to poison you and they're trying to get you to a place where you're taking this medication and the medication will bring cancer That's and right. everything else that it can. It's got side effects. We've got, we've got lawsuits. They're all over the Internet. Mm -hmm. Come on, folks. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to back up and say, Lord, what must we do? And this is what the Lord is saying to you, just like he said to our dear friend Naaman, Naaman, right here in the Bible. He said, look, I want you to go, and I want you to go bathe in that nutrient-rich water. It may look dirty and muddy to you, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm hiding a secret in the mud. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm hiding a secret in the nutrients that are in that water. You go ahead and bathe in that. Just like the pool of Siloam. Mm -hmm. a nothing but a mineral spring. You get in there and you stay in there. I'm going to tell you what. Your body will leach it. Your body is the biggest organ. Excuse me. Your skin is the biggest organ in the body. Mm -hmm. It will absorb what you need. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It will begin to excrete the poisons that are in your body. Yes, your is. body will begin to release mm -hmm. those poisons that have been pent up in your body. How many of the capillaries and veins? How many of you right now? Are suffering from blocked arteries mm -hmm. all kinds of things mm -hmm. are going on in your body right now mm -hmm. I'm speaking to not just a couple of folks here mm -hmm. I'm speaking to millions of people around the world mm -hmm. where we've got the answer for you through Christ Jesus the doctor won't tell you the truth but I'm going to tell you we're telling you the truth right now and we're going to show these things for what they are dead doctors don't lie some of you will recognize that hallelujah when doctors sit there and tell, uh, tell say that there's no, uh, there's no cure for macular degeneration, it was proven to be a lie. Yes. Hallelujah. There is a cure for it. Hallelujah. But you're going to have to continue to take the medication. Excuse me. You have to continue to take that nutrients and those vitamins, those rich minerals, so that you know that your body has has got what it needs. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this is not my area of expertise but the Lord God has kind of just put this down on the inside of me and he sent us some folks that really is their area of expertise and they're going to begin to share more and more of this with you but as you have taken, hallelujah, the whole word of God and as you have gotten not only better but much better that those of you who were in wheelchairs now are up and standing and jumping those of you who are paralyzed are now jumping. I'm going to tell you what. That's what we want to hear. We want to see how the Lord's knowledge being shared with you has brought you into a new place. Because I'm telling you, as you begin to walk in that healing, I'm praying that you'll walk in the whole Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And in the whole Word Amen. of God, you'll begin to spread the gospel testimony yes. of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. This is Trinity Kingdom Connection, the ongoing ministry of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ in the Christ. earth. Come and join us. Shalom, yes. shalom. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. Awesome, guys. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> word today. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Boy, I bet there's a lot of surprised people out there listening. Man, you know that's right. Huh? You know that's right. I'm telling you. Woo! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're like dancing singing myself. Hallelujah. Love. Keep drinking this water on. I have to go to the bathroom.